Ginger and chickpea, delicious flavor. Boil up the couscous while we cook a pint of gee. Hi, I'm Farah and this is Miller and Elizabeth. And in this video, we're going to show you how to make a delicious chicken tagine all the way from Morocco. So Miller, have you washed your hands? Yes. Have you Elizabeth? Yeah. I have, have you at home? Great. So guys, let's cook along. So Miller, what ingredients are we going to use today? Some dried apricots, some olive oil, some olives, some onion, coriander, well a lemon, garlic and some ginger and we have cinnamon, cumin, chilli and coriander, some chicken thigh, thigh fillets, fillets and we have some tomato puree. Perfect, that's wonderful, thank you. The utensils you'll need are a frying pan, a colander, a grater, a tagine or casserole dish with a lid, some chopping boards, a sharp knife, a cutlery fork, measuring spoons, a beaker and some scissors, a peeler, weighing scales, a measuring jug, a wooden spoon and some tongs. Whilst we get on with the chopping, I think it's a good idea to put the chicken back in the fridge and keep it cool. Elizabeth, yeah. I'm going to get you to cut the onion into pieces and do the garlic as well. What I need you to do is to cut the onion through using the bridge technique. So basically you stabilise the onion over the top with your thumb at the back and your fingers over the other side and you cut down keeping both roots on each side of the halves of onion. Okay, can you do that for me? Good girl, thank you. This will help actually stabilise the onion so it doesn't slip around. Well done, you're doing really well. Keep going, bit of sawing. Good girl, well done. So what I need you to do now, Elizabeth, is to peel them both for me and then we're going to slice it. Miller, I'm going to help you get on with this ginger. I'm going to use just the, the spoon, the edge of the spoon, to take the peel off the edge of the ginger. It's really simple and it comes away really easily. Miller, will you have a go at that? Hold it between your thumb and your finger, like this, and then you can scrape down. That's it, well done. So we're just going to take the, end, the brown end off because we don't need those. Perfect. And just slice down, thin slices for me. Do you do lots of cooking at home, Elizabeth? Yeah. Do you? What's your favourite thing to cook at home? I like to cook anything to do with pasta. Oh, one of my favourites. Pasta, pasta. Pasta, pasta. That's one of your favourites, isn't it, Miller? Pasta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brilliant. And then you can start taking the garlic out and we'd like a good couple of cloves of garlic for me as well. And then peel those as well. Is that okay? Yeah. Brilliant. So Miller, let's move all this out of the way so we've got some space to grate. Which side am I going to grate it on? A good question. I think this one's a really nice one actually. Use your left hand to hold the grater down and your right hand or your writing hand to do a one motion down. Stops your fingers from getting caught if you go up and down too quickly. That's it, brilliant. That will take a few minutes just to do. Elizabeth, how are you getting on? Three brilliant, and now we need to just peel these cloves as well. So sometimes I find it easier just to nip off the top of the clove, and then it gives you a little bit of a starting point to get hold of the skin. Do you want to have a go at that? I'll help you with this one. So Elizabeth, we're going to use the fork secure for this garlic. We're going to stab it at the end with the prongs, and then we're just going to cut down towards the prongs, but not all the way through. So it uses just a bit of a root at the end to keep it all together. Otherwise it will fly across the board. Can you do that with the other two for me? So we've done our ginger now. Miller, I'm going to put this ginger to the side and I would like you to take some of this lemon peel off. Do you know how to peel? You can see that I'm pushing down using my thumb to lever at the bottom and do one motion from top to bottom. And there we go. Well done, Elizabeth, thank you. Do mind your fingers and mind the palms of your hands. Brilliant. So we've done all our chopping and preparing now. We're going to actually just wash the coriander quickly. Miller, can you do that for me? Grab the coriander and we're going to give it a wash in the sink. We're going to pat it down with the paper. Just take some of the wetness out. That's fab, Miller. Well done. Now that we've washed the coriander, we're going to give it a little bit of a chop. We're going to use the beaker and the scissors to do so. 
We do this because it keeps it contained and it puts it into smaller pieces. Well done, Miller. I'll let you carry that on. Is that okay? In the meantime, I'm going to get Elizabeth to put her onion and garlic into a bowl ready to build our tashi. There we go, Elizabeth. Can you pop everything in there for me? And Miller, I'm going to do the same. Put the lemon and the ginger together. Thank you. And let's put these to the side. We need to get the chicken out of the fridge, ready to chop up. So we have our chicken and we're going to cut it into cubes. We have no skin on this and we're going to cube it up into little cubes. I'm going to do this because it's important that when we are cooking and prepping all our foods that we don't do any cross-contamination. If we chopped all the bits up first and then we're doing the chicken till last, we can then wash all our utensils and our boards afterwards. Make it sure you've got hot soapy water to wash everything down. There we go. We're going to get ready our olives and our apricots and our spices. Miller, can we uh, get you to do the spices? And Elizabeth, I'm going to get you to do the olive and apricots. Fab. There's your olives. There's your apricots. We need the weighing scales for these. Miller, I need a teaspoon for the cumin, the coriander and the cinnamon, and just a quarter teaspoon, the little one, of the chilli. Can you give me nice little piles so we can see all the different colours? Is that OK? Yes, Thank you. And Elizabeth. We're going to switch on our weighing scales onto a zero and we need 150 grams of apricots, please. Miller, I'll show you an easy way of doing it. You can actually just undo the top oh, yeah, yeah. and do... Yeah, yeah. Give it a little tap. If you, oops, don't worry. That was a bit much of a big... Right, give it a nice mixture. little pile. Don't spread it out. That's brilliant. And the same again for the coriander. How are we doing? 149. I think that's close enough. Do you want to see what one would make extra? 153. Now, do we go one under or one over? I think we should go one over just because then it gives it that extra flavour. And then we need to undo this jar of olives. Brilliant. Let's get a fork and we need to take that back to zero and put 50 grams of the olives in. All our spices have been weighed out. There we go. Look at all those lovely colours. Miller, we're going to do 15 millilitres of uh, tomato puree as well. Be careful. Paste, baby! Otherwise, have paste all over the kitchen. Paste! There we go. Put the lid back on for me. It looks a bit like a thin sausage. It does look a bit like a thin sausage. So, we have all our spices ready, our tomato puree, our apricots and olives weighed out. If you're not ready yet, please press pause now and gather everything together. We've got everything prepared. We're going to preheat the oven. We're going to turn the hob on to a really high heat. There we go. Make sure there's an adult near you. In the meantime, we need two tablespoons of olive oil and tip it into the pan. This will coat the chicken. There's one and two. <laughs> Once the oil's heated up, the chicken will pop in and it'll start to sizzle. That's how you know that the oil's hot enough. And we're going to batch cook the chicken just so that we make sure everything's thoroughly coated and sealed. I'm going to do this because obviously the oil's very hot. So always get an adult to do this part for you. Also make sure that everything is thoroughly sealed. And this will take a little while to get through the chicken, so do press pause now and we'll see you in a moment. We've got our first lot of chicken cooked off, we're going to put this into the tagine. Because we've already used the fork to transfer the raw chicken into the pan, we're going to use a pair of tongs now to pop that back into the tagine so that we're not having any cross-contamination. And when you've finished and you've done all the chicken, do remember to wash the board and the fork straight away. Miller, Elizabeth, can you see? We've coated it all, it's all gone white, but actually it's browned a little bit on the outside and caught the edges. Golden. Yeah, it gives it just that bit more flavour. And look at all those juices, they'll be perfect to go in too. Are they orange juices? No, chicken juice. 
Now we need to actually fry off the onion, the garlic and the spices. Elizabeth, pop them in for me. Keep the tomato puree aside for later. Do you want to use the wooden spoon? There we go. Coat the onion and garlic in the oil and the juices that are left over from the chicken. This will help soften them and give them a bit more flavour. This will take a minute, so do press pause now. Elizabeth is softening all the onions and garlic. Uh, Miller, I'm going to pass you the spices and then you can help Elizabeth add these to them. It's good teamwork. Elizabeth, will you knock them in with the edge of your spoon for me? There we go. We're cooking off our spices with the oil, onions and garlic. This allows them to stop being too powdery in the actual tagine. Combines it and emulsifies. There we go. That's brilliant, Elizabeth. I'm going to switch the heat off. Can you put it on top of the chicken? The pan will be hot, but with supervision, this should be perfectly fine to do. Brilliant. Thank you, Elizabeth. We've got our chicken in, we've got our onions, spices and garlic. We're going to add our apricots and olives, our ginger and our lemon, and a bit of coriander too. We're going to save some of the coriander behind, just to dress it at the end. So, Miller, can you pop that in? Fab. And then put the next bowl with the lemon and the ginger in. It's an absolute feast for the eyes, because you've got so many different colours. And what are we going to add next? A handful of the green. coriander, which is a great green colour. Put a handful in, Miller, please, for me. Pop it, sprinkle it all over. That's brilliant. We've got some for later. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to do quite a chefy trick here. We're going to put the hob back on again. And this time we're going to put in 500ml of water into the pan. So this is called deglazing. It's great when you've had um, any meat in there. Or, or any flavourings that might have come out of the vegetables also and the spices well done and then we're going to add our tomato paste in afterwards and it allows the tomato and the water to combine before we pour it on top of the tagine thank you Elizabeth so this is the main liquid of our tagine today right there we go Elizabeth if you want to pop in the tomato you're right there's more, a few spices in there as well that won't hurt and we let the tomato puree melt in the water Let's give that a bit of a mix. There we go. Because this is going to be very hot water, I'm going to pour it into the tagine now. So here we are. Wow. It looks like a very thin soup. It does look like a very... And it is a very thin soup almost. It's a very basic broth. Bravo. Bravo, bravo. There we go. Wow. Wow, indeed. All the ingredients are in the tagine, ready to cook. Shall we pop it in the oven for an hour? So the time has just gone off. Let's have a look in the oven. Do you want to check yours too? Let's have a look. Let's have a look everyone. Oh wow, look at that. What do you think to that? Are you proud of yourselves? I am, I'm ever so proud of you both. This is what I would do to me if I could. <laughs> That's a great idea Miller, well done. So the last thing we need to do is just dress it. Elizabeth, there's some spare coriander from earlier. Do you want to just sprinkle a bit over the top? There we go. Just makes it look that little bit more vibrant. Fantastic. If you'd like to have a go at another recipe, there are more cook-alongs for you to explore. We'd love to see what you made, take pictures and tweet them to at Eat Happy Project, hashtag Let's Cook Along. Did you enjoy it, guys? Yeah. yeah, can you smell it? Yeah. It looks delicious. We've really enjoyed making this Moroccan chicken tagine. We hope you have too. Say bye, Elizabeth. Say bye, Miller. Bye. bye.